Strong, along with Lester Cox, and we're talking with Arthur Rowe from the Bahamas Met Office, and we're talking about hurricane season 2012, which began on June 1st, Friday gone, and for the next six months we'll be paying close attention to the tropics. Let's talk about the preparations that people should be making that should have already been made by now. What needs to be done at this point? Well, what we do uh, every year is to advise the general public uh, through uh, the radio. I have an officer in particular who every morning would come on and tell them exactly what to do, like trimming uh, trees uh, that are near the homes that you know could fall and really cause a lot of uh, problems, uh, financial problems that is. Uh, we also ask them to make certain uh, when the hurricane nears to have a good supply of water to protect all of the valuable goods, any uh, outdoor uh, uh, perishable items uh, to secure them, and most of all, uh, protection of life. And that is uh, essential to the Department of Meteorology. We've had quite a bit of rain already for this um, rainy season, basically. Um, and we talked about it a bit a couple weeks ago, um, people saying that signs that um, a lot of rain means that we will dodge hurricanes this year. Um, have you heard stuff like that before? Any truth to any of that at all? We, we've heard that, but uh, I wouldn't take that seriously. Uh, right now, uh, for the month of May, uh, we had something like 8.6 inches of uh, rain, and compared to the long-term average for May, which is 4.54, uh, you could see the mark in, increase there. But Contrary to what people believe that if you have uh, rainfall then you don't have hurricanes, it's quite the opposite because the rainfall is what contribute to the development of the tropical cyclone. So if you have a moist atmosphere, you, there's a tendency for the systems to become much stronger and much larger. Really? So that is uh, uh, totally... That's, that's an uh, old wise uh, tale. Exactly. So if there's a drought, we would be less likely to have a hurricane? Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, uh, keep in mind, the hurricanes rise from uh, being fed water into the system. Now, if it is dry, then obviously you're not going to have any moisture uh, feeding into the system, so it will die out. That is why when hurricanes move over land, where it does not get the supply of water, they die out. You see, over the ocean, right. while they're over the ocean, uh, the sea is feeding the moisture into the system, so they remain and they probably even intensify. But over land, they die uh, rather quickly. There's a perception out there that um, we're seeing more hurt, more tornadoes now than before. I mean, is that necessarily true? And, um, and if it is, what's happening? Not necessarily uh, uh, true about, about that, because a study has been done by uh, Richard Peterson, and I think, uh, if my memory serves me correct, uh, tornadoes occur in every year except uh, uh, March, every month of the year, sorry, except uh, March. Now, what has been That's happening in the Bahamas? In the Bahamas. Good. Now, what has happened uh, through the years or months? We have a lot of our weather system moving across. We have uh, low pressure areas, we have upper level troughs uh, that we call them and trough it is termed that way because if you go back in time and you think of the horses the horses are uh, drank from this trough so the meteorologists use that term to mean that it holds water okay you know so when you hear of a trough it's really a system that has water in it okay so what happened is we have a, a quite a number there has been an increase in a uh, number of the upper level features now, and as a result of that, you have the thunderstorms developing and more and more tornadoes. So it's not necessarily true that we're seeing more. People just seem to believe that. Exactly. Wow. wow. Okay, let's talk about these numbers again. Um, again, it's uh, a below average year anticipated. Um, but five hurricanes expected and two major hurricanes. Let's talk about the numbers and what makes one a hurricane and what makes one a, a major hurricane. What types of wind speeds are we talking about there and what differences will we see in the impact and the damage that will come as a result? Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, five categories of uh, hurricanes and they go from uh, 74 to 95 miles per hour. That would be a category one, 96 to 110 uh, miles per hour. That would be a category two. 111 to 130 miles per hour would be a category three, 
and 131 to 155 miles per hour category 4. Greater than 155 uh, miles per hour would be a category 5. So when we say a major storm, we are thinking about 111 miles per hour and greater. And when we look at Irene, um, I know it was a, di a different intensity depending where it was in the Bahamas. But let's talk about that and what, what different islands here saw. Yeah, but Iron last year, uh, Iron was category 3 down in the central and southeast Bahamas. But as it, moves, uh, as it moved uh, northwestward uh, to impact uh, uh, New Providence, uh, Elutra, Abaco, Grand Bahama, it was downgraded to a category 1. Nevertheless, uh, we had quite a, a lot of our rain showers associated with it in the central and southeast Bahamas, but the rain start to decrease as it moves further to the northwest. So that was only a category uh, one. We had uh, uh, Andrew back in 1992, which was a category four storm in the uh, Bahamas. Uh, when it exited the Bahamas, it became category five. But now when you think about that, you think about 131 to 155 miles per hour, that could wreak havoc on any uh, weak construction that we may have in the Bahamas.